Hello and welcome to another edition of Lab Rats, your favorite technology show that demystifies all this weird stuff that you have to deal with, with your computer and your gadgets and all kinds of stuff like that. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And uh, today on the show, we're going to do a little more advanced topic, more than your typical soccer mom nonsense we'll be doing later, lately. Uh, <laughs> he likes that. Um, one of the things that we, we've been wanting to do for a while now is how do you create a website? Now, that's a topic like how do you learn French, right, Sean? Yeah, it's uh, something that you've got to start at the very bottom and build her up. It is. It so really it's is. a bit daunting. It is a bit daunting, but, but what we... What I wanted to do was not go, oh, well, just create a blog, because that's easy, you know. Uh, we're going to show you how actually you can make a website that you can grow from a very simple site to something that's extremely complex. With all the servers and the domains and that, that kind of stuff, I'm going to take you through it step by step. So no blogs? No blogs for you. Anyway, that's today on Lab Rats. And um, it was going to be fun, and there'll be no food. I mean, sometimes we have food demos. How, did, how, did, how, how would you demonstrate building a website using food? It would uh, take the entire a, fridge, I think. Pizza technology or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, maybe that's, we'll leave that for another day. Anyway, let's take a break and we come back. How to build a website 101. This episode brought to you by our friends at Hover. The easiest way to buy domain names and do more with them. Get 25% off today by visiting hover.com slash labrats. So I think the best way to characterize how to build a website is really to approach it as if you were opening a business on Main Street. Because really that's what it is. It's a presence, right, on the internet. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, let's start with, if you're going to open a business on Main Street, you need an address. Yes. Right? You need a destination. And in the world of the web, an address is what's called a domain, right? It's a URL. It's that www.something.com mm -hmm. that, uh, that, tells the, that gives a person a place to go to type into their browser. Right. Um, so, so that's the place to start. Then you need actually a storefront or a place to put your business. And then you need to build the content of your business, something inside the actual sh storefront that you have for people to go and see. Right. So having an address and an under construction sign won't cut it. Won't cut it, exactly. So let's start, let's start uh, from the beginning. And what we're going to do is, well, let's start with a domain. Mm -hmm. How do you get a domain? Where do you get a domain? And then we'll move through those two other steps. OK? Yes. So, uh, there are companies out there called domain registrars. Um, and uh, you can either go to a web company who provides the storefront and the name, who actually pushes you through to a registrar, like Two Cows, the company that owns us, mm -hmm. uh, or you can go directly to the registrar itself. Now, I'm going to uh, take us to hover.com, which is a, a storefront that uh, Two Cows uses to sell domains. But you could go to any of them. You could go to uh, GoDaddy. Uh, I used DomainDiscover.com for years. Mm -hmm. um, there's all kinds of different domain registrations, right? Yes, tons of them out there. So simply to, to, to register a new domain, you've got a bunch of choices, right? You've got, you, you know, primarily most people are going to go and want to get a .com address. The problem with a .com address, of course, Sean, is that uh, a lot of them are taken. If all the good ones are taken. If you're going to start a, a pet store, then pets.com is probably not available. And it's probably not a good idea either, considering what happened with pets.com. That's true. Really kind of the puppet kind of died, right? Anyway, um, so, so it may be a challenge to get the .com, a .com address. It's primarily the address you want because people naturally go www.something.com, mm -hmm. which you could get .net. Uh, you could get uh, a regional uh, first-level domain, like .ca in the States. I think it's mm -hmm. .co.us or something like that. Yes. Uh, in the UK, it's .co.uk. And you know yeah. that kind of thing as There's well. There's tons of them. There's tons of them. Dot info. There is lots and lots. So let's just start by seeing what's available uh, on Hover.com. I'm going to click here on register a new domain. So I'm going to click on the select button there, and it says, "What domain would you like?" Hmm. So what's uh, what's the storefront called? What, what business are we going to start? We're going to start one dedicated to macaroni and cars. Okay. So cheese. No car. Cheesemobile.com. Cheese. Cheese. I'm going to type in cheesemobile. Can't spell here. dot com, and I can say, click on proceed. So it's going to actually search the database, see what's been registered, what hasn't been registered, and you don't necessarily own a domain. Mm -hmm. You kind of rent it from the world, and you pay yes. an annual fee to use it. So it says, unfortunately, Sean, cheesemobile. dot com is not available. Oh! It's just somebody else is obviously building a cheese car business right now. That's just wrong. <laughs> so, um, so, but you do have an option, uh, cheesemobile. biz. Yeah, see, this is the thing with dot-coms, is that 
even something as seemingly obscure as cheesemobile. Someone's taken it. Everything that's like that. Any permutation of word plus word. The good news is cheesemobile.net is available, so we could probably choose that. Mm -hmm. And uh, cheesemobile.ca, if it's a Canadian company, we could do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and uh, if you don't want like cheesemobile, you could go with uh, cheeseshopmobile.com, mm -hmm. which might work. It could. <laughs> so I'm going to click on cheeseshopmobile.com. Now, you want, you want to keep it a fairly simple name so people can remember it. Try not to put any dashes in the name. Try not to make it really obscure or weird spellings unless you're really going to market it as a brand. Like mm -hmm. Flickr, for example, Flickr without an E. Mm -hmm. they, they did that because that's all they could get. And they managed to, people remember it's Flickr without an E dot com. Yes. Correct? But that takes work. That takes a bit of work. It does. So domains cost you about 15 bucks a year. Mm -hmm. You can get a better deals. You can get them uh, for 10 or 5 or 2 in some cases. Mm -hmm. um, and you do get a better deal if you uh, go for more years. So if you know you're going to be in business for about 10 years, you don't want to go anywhere, you can save a bit of money by just going for the 10-year plan or even the 5-year plan over one year. That's true, yeah. And it saves you the hassle of having to remember to re-register in that time period too. That's true, yeah, because if you forget and it goes out, then you may be in trouble. If it goes, it goes, it expires and you forget to pay. Um, I'm going to give you a little tip here. If you use the code LABRATS on, uh, on uh, hover.com, you'll get 25% off, I think. So just type it in right there, coupon code LABRATS, and uh, we'll save you some money. Okay, so you have your domain name now. It's registered, mm -hmm. and uh, you're going to have to, you have to, when you do register it, you'll have to uh, change the DNS, or the domain name ser service, mm -hmm. on the uh, domain to point it at your storefront, which we're going to go get to next. Mm -hmm. So in terms of getting a storefront, what you need is you need a company that's going to have a computer that's on the internet that has a, what's called a web server. And the web server, of course, uh, is a, either Windows or a, um, a Linux machine or a Unix machine that actually has set up with software that will serve web pages. Yeah, this is also known as hosting. It's called hosting, very good, yeah. yeah. And that's something actually you can uh, buy from the, uh, the registrar too when you're registering the domain. Some of them actually offer hosting, which will bump up the price as That's well. true, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, I, when, when I started Cyberwalker uh, years ago, I went to a company called Vario, mm -hmm. uh, Vario.net. Uh, I've used PowWeb before, PowWeb.com is not a bad little hosting company. Again, uh, and th these things are very affordable for the most part, you know, uh, with some fairly advanced back-end, uh, like uh, payment gateways and things like that, cost mm -hmm. you 7 8 $10 a month uh, to actually physically host the store, get a store on Main Street, mm -hmm. that's what's going to cost you. And once you've secured that and you've paid your fee for usually for a year at a time, then they're going to give you an address where you can log into the, uh, the server with a, to put HTML files or right. web files. Now, when you build your website, you are going to want to create, get it designed, and create it. And, and what, the way you do that is with a program or with a programming language called HTML or Hypertext Markup Language. Mm -hmm. Now, most people, you know, if they're new to this, aren't going to be particularly savvy with HTML. So you could go out and get yourself a design uh, piece of software, like uh, Dreamweaver is what I've been using for a long, long time. There's lots of different HTML editors out there. Mm -hmm. Or simply, you could find somebody who will build the website for you and put it on this server. Exactly. Right? If you're a Mac head, you can actually use uh, the built-in uh, one that comes with the, I, uh, uh, the iLife suite called iWeb. I which would. is very basic. It's not going to do all of the fancy things that you see on big websites, but you know you can get a photo gallery, you can, you can get a basic main page, a few other extra pages on there. So it's right. it's very basic. Right. And you know in the Windows world, of course, if you have Microsoft Office, a premium version of that, uh, there's something called Front Page, yeah. which I highly recommend against. It's not a particularly. It's supposed to be easy, but it's not. And it, there's all kinds of weird Microsoft stuff to the web page. Yeah. The same, uh, Apple's does the same thing. It puts a lot of uh, weirdo uh, code in there that uh, is not exactly standard. So right. it's, it's good enough for a basic site. But if you're doing this professionally, you might want to look at something more professional. Okay. So, so you want to create a, uh, your home page first. And your home page is always a page uh, at the, what they call the root directory of your website called index.html. And of course, you can have other extensions like .php. Dot, uh, there's a bunch of different, I guess, Microsoft ASX, ASP, mm -hmm. things like that. Don't really worry about it too much. You need a file on uh, index.html is fine, and it, it will show when you dial your web domain. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, you know, without going into the depths of HTML and that sort of thing, I'm going to take you through how to create a basic home, basic HTML page, and then you can, and we'll give you some resources to learn the world of web publishing uh, before the end of the show. Yeah. So we're going to create a very basic placeholder page until you're ready to design a bigger, fancier, interactive one. That's right. 
So I'm going to show you uh, the, the product that I've been using for years. is fairly advanced. It's about a $300 program. It's called Dreamweaver, and it's from Adobe. It used to be uh, owned by a company called... Uh, Macromedia. Macromedia, exactly. So I, I have it up here on my screen. It's basically a blank page. And, yeah, that's uh, always the most intimidating is when you just see an empty expanse of white. The beginning, yeah, exactly. Now, there are, there are multiple ways of, of looking at your web page here that you're creating. In this particular case, I'm in the design mode, so I can actually just type this is a home page, and that text will show up on the page. It's sort of like, uh, it's WYSIWYG, right? So it's like a word processor. Boring. Very boring. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, type that. Now, when I flip over to the code view, you're going to see that, very simply, there's a bunch of what's called markup language uh, on, the, uh, on the site that's actually showing how the page is displaying it. Yeah, so that's the HTML, hypertext markup, markup language. language. There you go. You'll notice uh, one, a couple things about this. One, uh, it always, almost always starts with a, with a tag HTML mm -hmm. right here. And the, there's also some, uh, some clarifiers or, or qualifiers inside of the tag sometimes that will talk about the type of HTML you know, you're requesting being used by the browser or something along those mm -hmm. lines. But the Dream will put a lot of those default things in. Then uh, you're going to go, there's a head tag. And at the bottom, as you can notice down here, it says, so the head is an open tag. Mm -hmm. And what's between it will be displayed in the header of the web page. Uh, and notice here it says slash head, mm -hmm. which means that it is, that's the close. That's yeah. So very often HTML is all about a tag that says, let's start something. Mm -hmm. And then the slash tag to close something, to, to, yeah. to stop it, to encapsulate it. Okay. So that'll, that'll format it properly, make sure it goes into the right place on the page and won't interfere with other tags around it. That's exactly it. Now, you, remember, you know when you uh, go into a web page here and you look at the top, see it says web, I'm on Power Web here, it says web hosting by Power Web, one plan, one price, right? So right across the top there, it's mm -hmm. called the page title. Well, on our little demo here, the title is actually a tag called title tag. And I'm going to type here, uh, cheese, shop, mobile, right? So that will now appear in the title bar across the top. Um, everything, that the, the content of the web page that's actually going to be displayed, mm -hmm. you know, the text, the pictures, that sort of thing, goes between two tags called body. And of course, at the bottom, the last tag, you're going to see a slash HTML, meaning the end of the web page. Close. This then, page is done. This page is done, finished, bye-bye, that sort of thing. So uh, I'm going to, th there is a bunch of tags called H tags and mm -hmm. they're like headline tags. So I just created an H1 tag there. And as you can see, uh, Dreamweaver is helping me along. So I'm going to close, I'm going to say H1, H1. This is, a, this is a home page about cheese, right? Now if I flip over to the design mode, you'll see now it's big, right? Mm -hmm. And if I flip back over to the code page again, I can actually insert an image by going IMG, SRC equals, now this is an address where the image will lie on your home page. Um, so it could be in the images folder, and you can say uh, cheese.gif, and that's basically going to display an image when you, when, you, when you push it, when you publish. So th now that's the basics, right? I mean, we're not going to go into a whole uh, process where we don't have the time to teach you every single HTML tag here. But it's the beginnings of uh, where you should go in terms of building your web page. Uh, now, in, in the Dreamweaver design mode, you can actually, uh, you know, drag and drop things and modify them and change mm -hmm. colors using what's ostensibly a word processor, um, and this will write the code for you. Yeah, so rather than typing IMG SRC, is you can just drag that image straight in there and then move it around, resize it, and it'll create all the text, uh, right. the HTML text for you. And then the next job would be to actually upload the site to your web host, right? And so now you have content on, in your storefront and it will be displayed on the internet instantaneously. So that's, that's the real basics of it. And uh, because I know a lot of people will be like, well, what do I do? How do I do it? So domain first. Then you want to get a web host, a, web, a computer on the internet. And then ultimately, you want to create content with a tool like Dreamweaver um, to actually create your storefront or have somebody else design something for you. Um, I do want to mention a couple things. There's a, if you don't want to use Dreamweaver, it's a $350 program. Mm -hmm. It's fairly expensive. You may want to go and get a freebie, this uh, product here called Page Breeze which uh, is, has a free version, it's ad-supported, this Page Breeze Pro. Mm -hmm. um, again, easy sort of HTML editor uh, to use and to kind of get up and start it real quickly for almost no money at all. And finally, uh, our friend Michael, who is here, uh, he highly recommends this product here. This is called a head-first HTML with CSS and HTML. 
So no one has noticed the size of this book here. Yeah, right? there's, a, there's a lot to learn about this. It is. And, I, and CSS is cascading style sheets, which is a slightly more advanced uh, thing that'll keep all of the pages on your site looking uniform. Right, exactly. And, and it makes it easy to change the look and feel of it dynamically. Right. We'll get into CSS maybe another day. Yeah. Okay. Need a bit of a refresher on that. <laughs> anyway, so there you go. So that's the, uh, that's the basic of uh, how you build your own website, the mechanics of it anyway. Um, if we, we, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we need to add beyond this. I guess yeah, one site you should, should go and check out is webmonkey.com. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a really great resource for webmasters to learn the tricks of the trade, learn HTML, get an, an understanding of CSS. There's lots of tutorials and things like that on there. So uh, check that out at webmonkey.com. And with that, let's take a break. Okay. Now that we have cheeseshopmobile.com or cheesemobileshop.com. I'm about ready to sell my first cheese mobile <laughs> or mobile All right. or something. So let's take a break and when we come back, uh, we've got uh, Mr. Mobile, speaking of mobile, and uh, picture time after this. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Hover. The easiest way to buy domain names and do more with them. Get 25% off today by visiting hover.com slash labrats. Now, in a future episode, we should probably show you how to create a mobile website, but uh, for the time being, we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to send you to see Jay Goldman, Mr. Mobile. Is he at jgoldman.mobi? No, he's at butterscotch.com slash Mr. Mobile. Ah! Anyway, check out latest segment from Jay. Hi, I'm Jay Goldman, and you're watching Mr. Mobile. Today's another episode for all of you BlackBerry lovers. We're going to look at five of my favorite power user tips to make using your BlackBerry a little bit easier and a lot more fun. The first tip we're going to look at is hiding applications on the home screen. Now, your, your BlackBerry comes with a whole bunch of applications installed. You may have installed some other ones. And they're not all things that you need access to on a regular basis. Hiding those applications that you don't use often just frees up space, moves your other applications up, makes everything easier to find. So really simple tip, just pick the application that you want off your home screen hit the BlackBerry menu key and choose hide. If you want to see all the applications that you've hidden, just hit the menu key again, choose show all, all of the hidden applications will come back. You can use whichever one you want and then you can choose hide all again from the same menu and they'll all disappear. Our second tip has to do with auto text shortcuts. Now auto text actually comes installed on the device already and it comes preloaded with a whole bunch of auto text shortcuts that you may even have used without realizing it. There are things like if you wanted to type Aisle, you can type IL space and that will automatically fill in the apostrophe for you. Or if you double space after a word, it will put in a period and capitalize the letter of the next word, which is the first word of the next sentence. What you may not know is that you can define your own auto text for things that you type frequently and it will automatically fill them in for you. So if you've got an email signature that you want to be able to insert easily or maybe the address of your company, you can create an auto text shortcut and whenever you type whatever you've set the text shortcut to be, your BlackBerry will fill in the text. Setting up auto text is in the options area of your BlackBerry. Hit options off your main screen. There should be an auto text entry right at the beginning. Pick that and you can see all the auto text shortcuts that are in there and define your own. My third favorite tip has to do with the convenience buttons that you'll find on the side of your device. This is a BlackBerry Storm, so we've got one convenience button over here and one on the other side. And what you may not know about the convenience buttons is that they can actually be convenient if you set them to launch the things that you'd actually like them to launch. If you go into the options screen and keyboard setting for your BlackBerry, so again that's options off the main menu, find screen and keyboard, you'll see settings for the convenience buttons on your device, and this works on all BlackBerrys, doesn't have to be a storm, and you can choose a bunch of different options from the drop downs that are there to define what you'd like the button to do when you press it. It can be really helpful if you've got an application that you do all the time, say maybe launching the browser or if you're using something like Vigo for RSS reading and you want it to jump straight into that when you press the button. My fourth tip for today actually won't work on this device because it's a storm and only has the touch screen. But if you've got a different BlackBerry model, say maybe a Bold or an 8800, one of the best things that I can suggest is to turn off the dial from home option, which allows you to use the keyboard as shortcuts to launch applications right from the BlackBerry home screen. If you'd like to turn it off, go into the phone application, hit the BlackBerry menu key, then look for an options setting, and inside there, the general options will contain an item called dial from home, which can either be on or off. If you turn it off, when you're on your home screen, instead of being able to dial a phone number by just starting to press the buttons, you'll be able to use all the letter keys to launch applications. So B for browser, M for mail, that kind of thing. And if you want to dial a phone number, you just got to jump into the phone application and start dialing. So you're one extra letter press away from dialing phone numbers, but you've got direct access to all the rest of the applications on your device. Our final tip for today has to do with the LED coverage indicator, which is right here. 
Now, that light flashes for a bunch of different reasons. If you've got a message waiting, it might be red. If you're using a Bluetooth headset, it might be blue. But some of you may be annoyed that it just flashes green all of the time. It's actually flashing because it's letting you know that the phone has coverage, which is kind of helpful, except you probably spend most of your time in a coverage area, which means that it's just flashing green all of the time. If you'd like to turn off the LED coverage indicator, jump into the options right from your BlackBerry's home screen, look for the screen and keyboard area, and in there you should see a setting for LED coverage indicator, which can either be on or off. Turning it off will immediately get rid of the green flashing light, and you'll never see it again until you turn it back on. I'm Jay Goldman. This has been Mr. Mobile. Thanks for watching. Check us out on butterscotch.com for more episodes, and we'll see you next time. So, uh, thanks, Jay. That was fun, wasn't it? Always. Um, now we have picture time, which is my favorite time of the show. It's my favorite time of the show. Yeah. We, got a, we got a picture that you got to show off first, though. You actually uh, put a little bit of work oh, into yeah. your website while uh, we were watching Jay. Not that we weren't watching Jay, but I oh, was, We've you know, seen Jay before. Dual tasking. Yeah, no, I just, I just decided I was going to add a fun little uh, picture here of us that was taken by a viewer a while back on an iPod, and I made my background cheese-colored. There we go. So that's the beginnings of a... It's more lemon-colored. Empire, yes. Cheese, lemon, whatever. Lemon cheese. <laughs> anyway, so that's the beginnings of my design prowess. As you can tell, I'm not a, yeah. an expert. Okay, good. Let's see, see some pictures. All right. I so want to see some pictures. First up. I want to see some pictures. Can you hold on for a second? I'll show you some pictures. All right. All right? Thanks. So first up, we have a car. A car here uh, sent in by Adrian from Aurelia. Hey, it's got a lab rats license it's plate. It's got a lab rats license plate. And uh, you know what? This is not my car. And as far as I know, it's not your car not my either. Car. No. Uh, hey, so you know, I've seen this, though. I've seen this around Toronto. This is from Toronto, right? Or in the Toronto area? Well, it's from Ontario anyways. So he's, he's from Aurelia, so maybe he's seen I it in I swear I saw that on the, on the road the other day, a lab with their lab, unless it was labs, no space rats. I don't know. Did you roll down your window and start yelling out the window? Give me my license plate! There you go. That probably won't work, so maybe you should uh, throw a lab rats t-shirt or a butterscotch t-shirt at them. Maybe it will next time. All right. It's a good idea. Okay, so thank you for sending that, Adrian. Yep. Next up, we have a website. So we've asked people to send in anything they want, really, including their websites. And this one is uh, Steve from New York. He sent in his site, Technology Reviews, including a little bit of gratuitous Apple bashing. Technologyreviews.com. There you go. God of Tech, tech W.webs.com. So okay. it's a little bit convoluted. All right. Anyways. Okay. So there you well, go. So, so, well, after this show, after we've shown you how to create your own website, you should send in your websites and show us what you've created and uh, the uh, Apple products you've bashed, because of course, I would like that. That'd be good. Not a good idea. No. All right. All okay. Right. And we have a fun announcement. So keep sending your pictures in. You can email them too. You don't have to have a website about cheese or mobiles to have cheese mobile at labrats.tv. Yeah. Or more simply, feedback at labrats.tv. And I want to show you something because uh, moving forward, we're going to give people that send their pictures in these. And this is a sticker book uh, Ooh, sticky. from Moo Cards, and it has all of the butterscotch stickers. So it's a Lab Rat sticker and an A-list sticker and a... Uh, That's an ad. That's an ad. Yeah, all the different yeah, all shows. Of the, all of the shows. So we're going to send you a whole sticker booklet if you send your pictures in to us, okay? Uh, and, uh, and we also have another contest running right now. Yeah, and speaking of those shows, don't uh, forget to check out our other shows at butterscotch.com. And uh, write in to tell us at feedback at labrats.tv what your favorite other show is and what your favorite uh, episode of that show is. Right. We want to know what, what you're seeing, what, what you're, you're liking from the other shows. Yeah, exactly. And uh, when you do that, uh, we'll send you a t-shirt if uh, you're one of our chosen winners. Would you like me to model it? Pretty. There Look, you it's go. butterscotchy colored. And we have them in all sizes, so it'll fit you. It's true. There we go. All right. So uh, yeah, so send it. So tell, tell us the show, the episode, why you love that episode. And you could win a Butterscotch t-shirt. Yay. Yay. All right. Well, that's it for Lab Rats. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. Thanks for tuning this week in Pushing Play. We love you out there. Take care, and we'll see you next time. Are you ready?
10, 9, 8, 7. So the best way to characterize, ha oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Boy, it's blooperama today. I'm not ready to go now. 